20 years, Iowa's solid waste planning areas have followed comprehensive planning rules, working to divert waste from landfills, making sure recycling is available to residents, and carrying out integrated solid waste management activities. The present system provides greater rewards to planning areas which show greater landfill diversion. But the comprehensive planning system has limitations. That's why there was a push to make Iowa the first state to offer the Environmental Management System, or EMS, as an alternative. The uh, Groundwater Protection Act uh, was a great piece of legislation from the 1980s, uh, but uh, we found over time that uh, it didn't allow the flexibility. There are op different opportunities uh, in different parts of the state, and the, there's flexibility in the le legislation that allows them to focus on something that will really improve in their area, but it might not work as well in another area. An environmental management system is a process for managing environmental risks and continually improving environmental performance for the protection and enhancement of our natural resources. This process gives us an opportunity to identify um, pollution prevention opportunities as well as uh, efficient management of materials. Iowa's EMS legislation spells out basic details of the program. It goes far beyond just garbage, with six environmental components. Yard waste management, hazardous waste, water quality, greenhouse gas reduction, recycling, and environmental education. The legislation called for a pilot project. This kicked off in the fall of 2009 with selection of six pilot participants, representing a cross-section of Iowa solid waste agencies. We wanted to be part of the EMS program because we saw the possibilities of growing and really evaluating the things that we're doing. During 2010, pilot areas, or pilots, took part in a series of workshops. A consulting firm provided EMS expertise and guidance, assisting the pilots through the steps needed to set up their own environmental management system elements. After implementing the EMS, we had multiple benefits, including employee morale improvements, cost effectiveness, operational efficiency, so it went well beyond just environmental compliance improvements. Each pilot drafted an environmental policy statement. Each also determined environmental impacts and more criteria. Each then identified which objectives were most important to their agency and area, and which fit Iowa's six component areas. Each pilot established its own measurable targets and ways to achieve them. Moving through the process proved a great benefit. We've had wonderful training from um, the consultants. It's been great to interact with other pilot agencies to have them to look to for ideas and improvements. And we've seen a lot of benefit out of it. I think it's actually even better than we initially thought. We get our whole staff involved from um, every position is involved in work teams, they, they have ownership of what they're doing, so I, I'm really pleased with uh, where the direction is going. In addition to their own financial resources, EMS pilots were able to utilize a special pool of grant funds made available through the legislation and administered by an EMS council and the Department of Natural Resources. Funding helped each pilot work towards sustainable goals it established in any of the six component areas. This is really the chance for us to take the next step. We've complained about comp planning for 20 plus years now and said that it doesn't meet some of our needs for you know, actually making improvements in the field that don't directly relate to diverting the amount of waste that goes into the landfill. We were very concerned about the formula process that was in place for measuring goal progress and uh, we felt that we wanted to be evaluated on our own goals and merits. So this is our chance to demonstrate environmental improvement um, from activities that are specifically related to groundwater protection, to uh, measuring and divert, reducing greenhouse gases, to changing our operational practices in a way that improve the environment, but that don't actually relate to the amount of waste going into or staying out of our landfills. Freedom from comprehensive planning goals, along with that EMS grant funding, encouraged the pilots to begin and improve upon their projects. Improved CFL and fluorescent bulb recycling and disposal. Increased staff training. One pilot partnered with member cities to reduce brush burning, improving the environment and the relationship between all parties involved. Methane being emitted by landfills has a large environmental impact. 
However, there are many other ways pilots have identified to reduce energy use and therefore greenhouse gas emissions. This pilot set into effect a vehicle no idle policy at its facility. It purchased special meters to demonstrate how much energy it takes to run each piece of equipment. One pilot found water runoff and even grass clippings could be reduced when bluegrass lawns were partially replaced with buffer strips and prairie plantings. Another benefit was the energy savings, a double dip with greenhouse gas benefits. Many of the EMS projects also fall under more than one component. Recycling has been around a long time. Sometimes it's hard anymore to get folks excited about it. But some EMS projects did just that. Two pilots expanded shingle recycling programs. One worked on a multiple family housing recycling project. Another focused on event recycling efforts. A couple pilots targeted construction and demolition waste reduction. Sometimes people need to hear something multiple times before it sinks in. That's exactly why education is a key component of EMS. Good websites and signage are important too. They are among the overall goals of the EMS projects. Several pilots invested in themselves with education. They explore glass recycling, waste characterization, even an electronic demanufacturing facility certification study. <laughs> what are expected outcomes of EMS? A better management system for Rathbun area solid waste, an opportunity to uh, look for continual improvement in our programs and know where the improvement needs to be on a yearly basis. It will really make you think what you want to do and how you want to do it. And it's a different way of looking at solid waste. The difference between EMS and comprehensive planning, um, I like to think of it as uh, the difference between a crash diet and a change in lifestyle. It's on our minds a lot more. We're um, cognizant of, of what we do every day and how it impacts the environment. EMS participants submit an annual report showing the goals they set out and the results of their activities. As part of the EMS process, participants will begin to assess how they did compared to the goals they earlier set. They find out why things did or did not work. Then they start the process all over again. Sustainability is about resilience, you know, for the future and leaving a legacy for future generations to have resources to use. As this pilot project winds down, the EMS Council and the Department of Natural Resources look forward to working with the six pilot areas to capture just what was successful and which areas did not perform to expectations. The DNR will proceed with rulemaking to formalize the process.